on beeswax crayon and I'm just gonna color <laughs> all over. So these are our bees. Now it's kind of hard to see how many bees are in here but this is one reason we, hi we buy bees from Knight Family Honey and not Man Lake because this is about half the number of bees you guys are going to get. This is not a very... Is that from Man Lake? I think... Where is it? It's from, it's from Man Lake, but it comes from Oliveras in California. Oh, well, Oliveras package are usually bigger than this. So, when you get it, of course this one's probably been in the mail for a while, you want to pick up your can, just, just feel how heavy it is, so you know if the bees are starving. These bees are out of food. This can is very light. So uh, Christy's been spraying them with sugar water and we're gonna spray them one more time. You don't wanna drench the bees, especially when it's sugar water, because um, if you drench them, they breathe through their skin. They have, like you have one breathing tube here. They have lots of them that come out to their skin. And if you totally cover their skin with sugar water, they're not going to be able to breathe. So just give a little spritz on the screen. The guys that are next to the screen will pass it to the other bees. And this is sugar water. It's going to help calm them down a little bit. So this is that one-to-one -one yes, sugar it's, water? it's one-to-one. -one. Okay. And now I'm going to set these in the shade. We don't need them to be in the sun. Okay, while well, we get this oh, set thank up. You. And I'm going to set this over here out of the way. <coughs> and... Um, Okay, so I brought my entire bucket, even though you probably don't need a lot of stuff. This is what I keep my hive tools in, it's alcohol, so they're always sterile. Gets the, gets the propolis right off and everything. And then also, so the, the frames we buy are supposed to be wax coated. But the wax is so thin now, it's not enough. Like it That's gonna make it smell a lot better to the bees. And it's gonna provide them something to start with, to start pulling up into the right shape for calm. Are you doing every frame? Um, yes. <laughs> you guys can stop filming. <laughs> you have another beeswax uh, thing? We can, huh? we we can color beeswax too. Thing. So, these wax crayon and I'm just gonna color and then it's gonna touch the next one and it's gonna it's gonna mess up with B space so it's a really nice thing for them to start with it makes it smell more like home. I'm actually fairly nervous about installing these bees in the middle of the day. That we are just asking for them to leave. Uh, they'll ha they're going to have plenty of time to think about taking off because this place doesn't smell like home. We've done the best we can to make it smell like home, but um, the best time? Yeah. four or five o'clock in the afternoon, like right before dusk, I was kind of hoping it would be really windy and cloudy so that the bees would be more interested in staying in. <laughs> But uh, we're, we're just going to do the best we can. And that's another reason that you don't direct release the queen into here. You want her to stay in that cage. Because they've been in there with her for a few days. They're starting to think she's kind of theirs. And if she can't leave, usually they won't leave. So we want her in there for sure in that cage. <clears throat> okay. No. I do with my hive tool. I lose it every time. Let's get in here. Um, have, there's little see? grooves Here's in the, the bottom. Last one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to get it to not. Bow okay, out. so this is a frame feeder. Touch. It takes the place of a frame. It's really nice because the bees don't have to come outside to get it, so they can get it from right inside. And then we're going to leave a frame, and then we're going to take four frames out. Actually, I'm going to take out another one, just so I have lots of room to work. Here's our entrance right here. It's got, the entrance reducer is on the big opening. See the big opening? So I'm going to turn it so that it's got the little opening. That way the bees feel like they have a very defensible space. We're going to put that in there. The bees are starting to talk. Oh, it's probably because they're sitting there in the sun. So there's all kinds of 
stuff on the internet that's not good. And one of them that's really popular is that you can just open the top there and put that in and close it up and let the bees walk out. And the reason that's not good is because of how cold it gets here at night. The bees might come out and get on the combs and stuff and leave the queen behind and she's gonna freeze alone. So um, you wanna make sure that you put the bees and the queen together. Don't leave it up to chance. <clears throat> so I noticed that with the feeder, you're gonna have to leave out like two extra frames. Yep. They, Is that okay if there's a bigger gap? It's okay for now. Um, okay. Later, it's 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 okay. Later, we'll do something else. And they also make this is a frame. This is a big frame feeder. Uh, they make skinnier ones that take up just the amount of one frame. Oh. But I like I the big that. one because I don't have to come <laughs> back and fill it so often. So you want to get everything ready. Get your feeder filled. Get everything ready before you get the bees out. Is that one water? One. This is one to one sugar water. And I used ascorbic acid to adjust it to 4.5 uh, pH because that's what the bees are used to for food. And if you don't do that, the sugar water can eventually make them sick. Can you use uh, vinegar too? You can use vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Oh, sure. uh, and, no, not, and not raw apple cider vinegar because it has enzymes in it that the bees can't digest. It needs to be that plain old cheap store-bought apple cider vinegar. You need to get pH strips and find out how much okay. so that you can, um, <clears throat> that was a half teaspoon of a store. It's tempting not to drop the bees off the can because you don't want to, you don't want to make them fall, but it's actually harder on them to try to pull the can out with the bees hanging on it because you break their little legs off and stuff. So the easiest thing to do is just, and the bees all fall. Now I can, I can take this can out. And the reason I'm doing this is because the queen cage is right next to the can. It's pretty tight fit. I'm looking for the little sticker thing. And there's a little slot right there that she's pulling that out of um, so that there's little pieces hang in there. That's just what you want to see, just a few bees hanging on there. It means that they've pretty much accepted her already. If there were a monster ball, it would be less like they had accepted her. So I'm going to set my thing off to the side a little bit. I'm going to shake these bees off into the... <laughs> and now I'm going to look. I'm pushing the bees out of the way. And there's the queen, and she's very excited in there. So I can see that she's alive. That's so what we're doing is just making sure she's alive. And I have a candy, candy plug in my pocket here. We're going to take this cork out and put a candy plug in. This is why. Will it come with a candy plug? We'll, we'll, yes. Okay, we'll, we're going to pass these out. You'll all get one with your, with your package. So see, the bees are fine. They're not at all aggressive. They have nothing to protect. So you don't really usually have to worry too much about it. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually look at the queen. This queen is really running, but I wanna be able to see where she is when I take that cork out so that she's running away from the cork when I do it. If you do it when she's running towards the cork, she can get away. And a queen that hasn't been laying can fly really easily. The bees are making it hard for me to see her. Okay, there's my cork. Now, same thing, I'm gonna watch the queen and when she's walking away, I'm gonna slide this candy plug into the hole. If you're not careful about doing that when she's walking away from the hole, ouch, she can fly and, and you have lost your money. Don't feel like you have to push that cork all the way in. There's not very much room in there, so let the queen have the space and just leave it sticking out like this. Now, we're going to Take this frame right here and we're going to put the queen on the frame just like this so that the bees can access that screen so that they can feed her. You want to be careful you don't put the screen facing the, um, the thing because then they won't be able to feed her. So the easy way to do this 
that's this that's what this metal tab is for but when you when you use the metal tab it's hard to be sure that when you put everything back together that she didn't get turned and when you use the rubber band you know for sure that she's right how you left her and if you use the metal tab and hang her between the frames now she's between the frames they're going to start drawing comb right where she is and now that she's on here they're going to start drawing comb on this so you don't have to throw away comb so I'm going to put her right in here. And now you, this thing has little, little hinges and I brought a spare one so you guys can play with it too. And you just use your hive tool to pry those hinges open. You can dump the bees out the top and they're just gonna pour out, but it's easier if you dump them out the side. <clears throat> and you really have to work at it. You yeah. Try it's... it with your hive tool. Don't worry about hurting anything, you'll be fine. Exactly. Okay, so that's what we have. That's what it looks like. can just dump the bees out of there. <laughs> Oops, sorry boys. I should have done that in the front so that they'd be walking in. Do you want to spin the And hive? then let's move this so the bees can actually get in. Do you see a lot of dead bees? Uh, I can't really tell right now who's alive and who's dead. See, now see, I'm going to set this right here so the bees that are left in here can walk in. And I really shouldn't have dumped any on the outside. I'm sorry I did that. Yeah, just try not to do that. Didn't work. Carol's going to do better. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> you just set the bar. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> so nice. normally, that like when you guys get your bees and there's twice as many bees, they're going to be like pouring up out of here. And you're going to be like, where do I put the frames back? So, you just gently put the frames back in. See how Carol made them a little bridge? That's so great. <coughs> that was really nice. Actually, that'll probably be even a better bridge. So, as long as you move slow and, and uh, the bees are going to get out of your way. You'll notice that these bees are different colors. That's because they're different kinds of bees. This is an Italian bee. This is a Carniolan bee. That's, these bees weren't even related a couple days ago when they took them out of their hives. They dump them in there from millions of hives and then they pour them into these boxes. So now I've got my queen right there. The bees are already all over her. I actually want to move her a little closer to the feeder. So, see, I always do, give a little demo about how not to do it. <laughs> so, because I want her kind of right in the middle and kind of close to the feeder. See how I'm making these shoulders touch each other? That's because those little shoulders on these frames keep them exactly the right distance apart to preserve what we call B space. So I'm going to push this one away just a little bit so the bees have a little room to walk around in here. And now I'm going to push these to get over here so that all my shoulders are touching. There's a little extra space right there. It's fine. They're not going to get there right now. We don't want to leave it that way forever, but we want to um, <coughs> If you get a bee in your veil with you, don't panic. She just wants out. <laughs> and if, of course, these bees are so calm. I really don't even need a veil but you know when your bees aren't calm and you get a bee in your veil don't take your veil off in the yard I mean I know that sounds like something you shouldn't have to say but my husband does that every time he just whips his veil off in the yard and I'm like dude you're gonna get stung five more times now <laughs> oh you have one on your head yeah still yeah the oh, back. There, there, there it went away okay so now we've, we've got this is I told you about this is a frame feeder and it keeps the bees from drowning and the reason this is really nice is because it holds a couple of gallons of food 
Uh, of course, these beads are only going to take maybe a pint the first uh, day or two, and for about a week, they'll take about a pint a day. Within a few weeks, they'll be taking a gallon a day. So it's really nice wow. to have a bigger feeder that can really do that. So we're going to put this over here. So, so inside her frame feeder, there's ladders in there so the bees don't drown. They're able to hold on to that. That's what these these are also they close. So it helps to keep the bees alive. Yeah. So oh, definitely, if you get a frame feeder, be sure you buy the. It's called ladders system. Otherwise, um, this the whole top is open and the bees just drown in there. I mean, millions of them. How long should you feed your bees? You should feed your bees until they start having some drought honey. When they start to cap it, that's how they know there's extra. And they feel like there's extra. So go ahead and do that. The bees aren't really walking out of that um, package nearly as well as I think they ought to be. Yeah. Um, and, and Christy's mentioned several times that these bees aren't, haven't been very active. I mean, I wonder how many, how long they've been in this cage. They they've been in the, uh, it's, it's, yeah, they were late. <laughs> so the ladders, you have to attach them to the thing? My bird feeder. <laughs> that they can use to tell other bees how to go. See, they're walking on that a little bit, not much. I'm really bummed I knocked them out there. That was a bad mistake. You know, but sometimes that teaches. Right? Better. I'm, I'm good at making, you know, mistake teaching. We all have. <laughs> <laughs> but. They should be interested in this because it smells like beeswax. Yes. So Carol brought this. So I think I'll hold this this way. I'm going to find a spot that doesn't have bees on it where I can kind of chunk it so that they'll fall out. That's a lot better, but you know, it's okay if they don't all come out. They will eventually because the queen's in here. The bees should be putting out Nazanov pheromone, which they actually are not, which is kind of weird. Can you smell it? How do you know they're not? You use an inner cover because if you use just a telescoping cover, they can glue it down with propolis and then you can never get it off. This, you can get your hive tool between the body and it and pry it off. So, see we have bees all over the edge here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it down slowly. See, I'm gonna wiggle the bees out of the way and I'm not putting it down straight on. Now I'm gonna rotate it into place and that will snow plow the bees that are in the way out of the way so I don't crush a bunch of bees. And then we're gonna take our, uh, oh, in case you didn't notice, there's a slot in it. This, not all of them have slots. I like to keep my slot at the front in the spring that way we're not drawing a lot of air through there. And later in the summer when it's hot, you can put your slot at the back and it'll draw air through. But right now, you want to keep them a little warmer. Same thing with this. I'm going to snow plow the bees out of the way. There's a hole in the middle, so any bees that are on it can walk on in. And that's it. They're in. And then just leave your package there overnight and let them, they'll walk in eventually, they'll figure out what's going on. These are the slowest moving bees I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Usually you go have a whole grade of them uh, going right into the hive. Yeah, yeah. And, they'll, and the ones on top will be fanning and, you know, I don't know. Let her get established. So right now, this doesn't have much that's like home. In about four or five days, they're gonna have a lot of comb drawn, actually. But there's no brood in there yet, and brood is what makes the bees stay. So don't disturb your bees. When you get in there to find out if she's in, if she's out of the cage, take the cage out, close it up, and go away. Don't look for her for at least a week. And in a week, if you want to look for her, you can, but set a timer for 10 minutes. If you don't see her in 10 minutes, close it up and get out because we don't want to disturb her until there's brood in this hive. And then if you want to mark her after that, good. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. You have overwinter hives and you have some extra honey frames and maybe a bee bread frame? Or, or 
Hong Kong, is, are those good if they aren't diseased? Super, yes, yes. Correct? The more drawn comb they have, the faster they're going to go. Because that's going to, Queen's going to start laying eggs right away. Honey's the right food for them. Bee bread's the right food for them. It's great. Can Super. you reuse, can bee bread frames from last year be used for this year? If, if they, if they were like fall frames, but, well, bee bread's, bee bread supposedly lasts a year. Oh, it does. Yes. But if it's more than a year, and they don't clean out old bee bread very well, I, it, yeah, the, the newer research is saying they're not touching the older stuff. Yeah, so if you have bee bread that's older than a year, just use your hive tool and dig it out of there and, and don't even bother with it. And we'll put this back before we leave. It's very important that you have that in there. Come on, girls. Normally, they just walk right in. But you can see it's facing southwest, and that's because the other hive is facing south. And we don't want them both facing south because it's hard for the bees to tell which one is theirs. When the bees look for home, they fly around in front of the hive, and they're taking a picture of what's behind there. If you, if you have one here, the picture right there is pretty much the same as this picture here. But if you go over here and look, this picture is way different than that one. So we're really helping the bees find home. So they can actually be facing in any direction. I usually try not to face them north, although I've done plenty of bee removals from north facing walls. Um, but they get to fly a little more in the winter if they're facing kind of south. So I could have chosen to face this one southeast instead. But I chose southwest because I like the west facing. They get to fly more in the winter. So. And the reason that you do liquid sugar on a new hive is because? Because they don't have anywhere to put that. So they go and ingest the, sh the sugar water. It's in their honey stomach and there's nowhere to put it. And because they hold it, it makes them exude beeswax. And now they have a place to put it. And so that's why we feed them liquid sugar water. Thank you for that. Lovely question. <laughs>